Hey guys, how's it going? Tool Cruz here with Jonas. And we're on our way to go grocery shopping here in our local town in Japan. Chunchan's on her Mama Cherry bicycle. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, the Mama Cherry is the bicycle of choice in Japan. Comes with a nice rack in the back and a basket in the front. Really ideal bike for commuting and grocery store shopping. And we're on our way up this little hill here to our local grocery store. For the last five years that I've lived here in Japan, I've always gone to the grocery store by bike, but lately I've been really busy with work and I haven't had much time lately to go to the grocery store by myself. Tunchan usually goes there by herself because she finishes work earlier than I do, so she stops by the grocery store and gets the groceries and I come home and eat her delicious food. But today, I actually have the day off of work, so we're riding to the grocery store together. We're on this nice little sidewalk right here. So sometimes it's really hit or miss with the sidewalks here in Japan. Sometimes you get some really narrow ones that aren't that great. And sometimes you get some really nice ones like this that are nice and wide and maintained. In the summer, the grocery store ride is pretty brutal, especially if you're buying ice cream, that stuff melts really quick. And if you know me, you know I love my ice cream. But we're in the fall season right now, nice cooler temperatures. So riding to the grocery store is pretty nice and comfortable. This is a massive electronics store over here. Never really go there, buy all my electronics off of Amazon. And over here to the left side, we've actually got our grocery store. So this is the grocery store I go to all the time. It is the cheapest one in our area, Kane Sue. And if you don't know, Grocery stores in Japan are very regional, so some chains only exist in certain regions. This is an example of that. There's a bunch of different bikes parked here. Office press. And the cool thing about these locks in Japan, you just push it like that, pull out the key, and you're good to go. I'm actually gonna bring my bike down here. I didn't bring my lock today. This is my single speed, by the way, but should be okay. I rarely ever lock it, actually. Someone on a bike, pretty rare here, actually. And let's go on inside. Naka mite mio. One of the reasons I really love this place is because on weekdays, they have 3% off. You actually gotta get a membership card now. So here we go. Pretty plain supermarket, but I actually like it that way. It's got a nice smell of sono ni e nani. Really good smell. So this is the sweet potato stand, the yaki imo. They bring out these every once in a while and if you're lucky, you can get them nice and fresh. Love these guys, one of my favorite snacks in the fall and only about 100 yen for each one. It also tells the time when they were made. We've also got some flowers on sale here. And what do we got over here? We got some mikan, kind of like oranges, 300 yen. We're gonna grab some of those. We also always grab bananas. Banana. Banana itsumo taberu. We got two varieties here, the cheaper one down here, 100 yen for a batch. So it's actually really cheap here in Japan if you know the right places to look. And they've got more expensive ones here, 147 yen and 200 yen for the premium bananas. So we're making our way down the first aisle. This is the produce aisle. We've got some nuts and stuff over here and vegetables over here, fruits on the left side. And everything seems to be on sale right now. We got some pumpkins. So this is what Japanese pumpkin looks like. Nice and small, green on the outside, orange on the inside. I eat this a lot in the fall. And carrots, 97 yen. And these are really cheap for the pumpkin as well, 87 yen. And over here we've got our apples. I love my apples, 400 yen, so about 100 yen each. Grab some of these. Also a couple different varieties here. And 
And these are really good this time of year, Ichijiku. Never had these before coming to Japan. And we've also got some premium grapes here. These are pretty expensive, 600 yen for these ones and 800 yen for these, pretty pricey. And wow, they've really got this promotion going on right here. Actually, this place used to always be 3% off on weekdays. You didn't need a membership card. But actually about eight years ago when I studied abroad here, I also came to this same supermarket, a different location. And at that time they had a membership card. But when I came back to Japan five years ago, they got rid of the membership card and you could just come and get it. And now it seems like they made their membership card again. So they seem to be switching back and forth. So these are big peach. <laughs> big peach, 350 yen each. Some pineapples, some lemons, kiwi, and all the fruits. Also got some avocados. These are in bags, this is new. They used to never really be in bags like this. So they don't let us pick individually anymore. And Tuan-chan loves her cucumber. For ichiban skina yasai. <laughs> Next, we're making our way into the seafood area. So a bunch of different seafood here. I'm not too big into seafood myself, but Tun Chan loves seafood. Sakana ski da ne, kimi. Ski. And right next to here, we've got our liquor aisle, our sake aisle. And we don't actually drink that much, but you can see. We've got some in plastic cartons here. We've got some in glass bottles here. And then we've also got our wine section. And then we get down to our Japanese beers. But again, Tun Chan and I don't drink too much anymore recently. We did a while back, but lately, not so much. Anyway, tons of alcohol here. And right next to the pet food. But we usually skip this aisle. Crispy kiss. Also got some miso, instant miso soup here. Often have this with my lunch at work. Grab some of that. 10 in the pack and about a little less than 200 yen. We've got some toiletries here. I think we're pretty good on that. We're not gonna get anything. Here's some of the baking goods. We got some salt, different sugars. And over on this side, we've got some different mixes for different foods like Japanese curry and uh, Thai curry as well. A bunch of different curry options here. Also got cream stew. And we usually go with uh, either Vermont curry or golden curry. Those are usually go-to curry options. And we're actually having curry for dinner tonight, some leftover curry. And over on this side, we got a bunch of different soy sauce options. Soy sauce country here. We've got some different flowers as well. We usually use that to make some like pancakes. And over here, we got a bunch of different miso. So that's like a fermented soybean kind of sauce. And really popular here in Nagoya, which is where we live. Miso capital of Japan. Some bonito fish flakes here. These are popular on a lot of different Japanese foods. Let's go on to another aisle. These are some crackers that Tuntun really loves. Coconut crackers. We've made our way to the drink and snack aisle, so we got some senbei crackers, rice crackers here, and drinks over here. We actually don't drink too many different beverages. We try and keep it pretty simple with just uh, water, tea, milk, and some vegetable juice and stuff like that. Uh, Canada Dry is pretty popular here in Japan. Pretty good ginger ale. And some of our regular snacks that we eat are these sumami. These are pretty good. Chung Chan likes these. And we also get these plum flavored like rice and peanut snacks. Really good stuff. They've also got a wasabi flavor. These are about 180 yen each. Other grocery stores, these will be over 200 yen. So everything here is just a couple percent cheaper, a couple yen cheaper. And over the course of the year, it just really adds up. Some of the other drinks that we get here are sports drinks. So we've got some giant containers of Pocardi Sweat. If you get these at other grocery stores or convenience stores, they're pretty expensive, but you can get them pretty cheap here. So we've got Aquarius, which is kind of the knockoff. That's still pretty good, but 130 yen for this at two liters. And this is 157 yen at 1.5 liters. So I usually go for this, which is the better value. You can also go with the off-brand uh, 91 yen, 
but I, I don't go that far. I go usually in the middle here. We have plenty of this back home though, so we're not getting any today. This is the tea section. We usually stock up with a little bit of tea. In particular, I really like oolong tea. So this one here. And these are pretty heavy, so we can't carry too much at a time. And Tuncheon really likes nani ga suki. Mugi cha ga suki. So we'll get some mugi cha here. Oishi mugi cha. These are also really popular here. This is furikake, so kind of stuff that you sprinkle over your rice to make it really tasty. This one's really good, kind of like egg and seaweed. You can also get powder mixes for your drink mixes here. So this is the Pokari Sweat drink mix. I use this a lot in the summer when I do more riding. Next we got our uh, dirty snack aisle. So a bunch of different chips here. And this is one of the more dangerous aisles here. There's some really delicious chips and snacks here. Avocado cream cheese chips, Doritos, and our favorite, Saya Endo, Ichiban Ski. These have the best protein to fat ratio. And so that's my justification for eating these. A couple different interesting ones. Oh, Tunchan's off. She must <laughs> think she's gonna go get her favorite chips. Tunchan no Ichiban Ski na chips. Shiawase. Shiawase bata. <laughs> Next to all the chips, we've got our more sweets and chocolates. And there's a bunch of different things here. Especially really popular is the Pocky Sticks. I don't really like those too much because they usually end up making me more hungry and not satisfied and just want to eat more. Bunch of different snacks here. Topo's also pretty popular. And here we've got some smaller chocolate packs as well. So one of my favorites actually, I like things just simple. I try and go with this cheaper dark chocolate here. Only 70 yen for some black chocolate. They call it bitter chocolate here. And actually, often they'll call a dark chocolate black chocolate here. So you can see black chocolate. And it's pretty busy today. We gotta get our eggs. So these are actually really cheap here. The first one you get is only 107 yen. And for the second one, if you get a second one for your family, it increases in price to 127. So good deal. And here we also got our bread. Oh man, these are on super sale today. Only 60 yen and this is kind of like a sweet bean in here. So we often eat these for our, our cycling rides because they're high in protein, high in carbs and just really good. If I count. Shumatsu cycling no chikara. So these are all kind of the same. These are red bean filling inside. This is the white bean version. And this has the beans in solid form kind of mixed around on here. So they're all more or less the same thing. I usually like the regular red bean or the solid red bean. I'm not too big of a fan of the white bean, but I like it every once in a while. We got some more bread here. Some rolls, honey, and jams. And uh, this is pretty much the only peanut butter you'll find in Japanese supermarkets. It's pretty small and about 450 yen. They also have a bunch of usually fake peanut butter or what is called peanut cream here. And peanut cream is not the same thing as peanut butter. This is usually just full of sugar. There's no protein in it. So I do not recommend this. Avoid this at all cost. If you see peanut cream, don't eat it. It's usually not good. Try and find some regular peanut butter. I actually made a video on this channel a while back about how I get my peanut butter in Japan. I order it all on iHerb because I'm not too big of a fan of Skippy and you can get some better stuff that's way cheaper. So there's your peanut butter lesson in Japan. And this is about all the cereal variety that you'll get in Japan. There's really not much variety here, but it has been increasing over the last few years, especially with things like granola and oatmeal. A couple years ago, that stuff was really rare and hard to come across. And we've got some oatmeal here. So this is a decent size for about 350 yen. That's not bad. It used to be way more expensive and way harder to come across. And we've got some new granola options coming up lately as well. The granola here is usually pretty sugary though. It has a lot of sweet and not pure granola ingredients in there, but it's better than nothing. And here's our wheat bread that we usually get. So this one's pretty cheap, 140 yen, and we get a decent loaf of wheat bread here. So we always get this, one of the more popular breads here in Japan though is the white bread 
or shokupan as they call, and they come in different slices, so, which is kind of weird. The slices change in thickness. So if you get a six slice, the thickness is pretty big. If you get a five slice, the slices are a different size. You can also get like a four slice, which you can see is just huge. But these are really good for things like French toast. And you can also get your bread with the crust cut off if you're a little child. There you go. Another one of my favorite breads here is the English muffins. These are really good. I usually get these to make my egg sandwiches. And they recently have increased the variety here. So we've got a wheat version and a rye version. There's also a berry version sometimes. And this wasn't here before, and these new options are starting to come out, which is really good. And Chun Chan loves her cream cheese. Skinny mm. natane. So before she never tried cream cheese, I introduced it to her. And sugu skinny natane. And let's also take a look at some of the other interesting breads that we got here. So this is the same red bean I was talking about earlier. This one actually has some egg inside of it. And this one has like fish eggs. There's a couple of different like pre-built burgers here. And this is not refrigerated or anything, which is kind of weird to see. And this one is also really interesting. It has like a slice of bacon and egg and mayonnaise. And just, yeah, really interesting variety of breads here. Another one of the nice fall options here is the satsumayimo, which is the sweet potato. And I love the sweet potato breads and all the fall snacks that are coming out right now. This is another nice one that I like to have every once in a while. So a nice sweet bread with a chocolate bar right in the center, really good. And then of course we've got our standard red bean anpan, which is also a classic. On the other side of the aisle here, we've got our sort of dairy, our cheese, our butters. And this is another thing that's been increasing in Japan lately. In the past, there wasn't much variety of cheese and this is slowly starting to increase lately. Another positive trend that I'm really happy about. As Americans, we love our cheese. This is the cheese that we usually use when we make like our tacos, have our taco nights. We've also got these sort of really cheap pre-made pizzas and they look really good on the covers, but they're actually like really light, like there's nothing to them and they don't taste that great to be honest. So I usually don't eat these and I don't really recommend them. Not really great. Pizza is one of the things in Japan that they usually don't do really well and it's overpriced. There's a couple of places that do it well, but for the most part, it's not that great making our way over to the frozen aisle now. And we've got all of our typical frozen aisle stuff here. So frozen fruits, you can use these in your smoothies. Oh, they got frozen avocado now, that's really nice. I often use the frozen strawberries in my smoothies, frozen vegetables, some frozen bean bean bok, Korean food. And this is one of the things that we often get, frozen chahan, so frozen fried rice. And we can quickly turn this into a meal. Only 200 yen and it's a nice base for a quick meal. Just put it in the fry pan and it's good to go. We've also got some frozen pastas here. So this kanji actually means like big size, like omori. And pasta is pretty popular here in Japan, but some of my Italian friends here in Japan like to um, slam Japan, say their pasta is like not real pasta. Ah, kore oshikatta. So we tried this one just last week and Tun really liked it. So we're gonna get this again, try it again. These are our backup meals. We don't eat these regularly, but in case we run out of ingredients in our home, we like to have a backup meal in our freezer uh, just for those lazy nights when we don't feel like cooking. Next, we're on to the meat section. And this is kind of something that's unique compared to America is Japan often has this really thinly sliced meat. And yeah, it's something that I couldn't find when I went back to America. And you really need this kind of meat to make a lot of different recipes, like Japanese food recipes. And it's really common here in Japan. And meat prices here actually are not that bad. so. Pretty reasonable, 350 yen for these, but depending on the quality of the meat, they can get pretty pricey pretty quick. Got some nice giant steaks here though. These are pretty reasonable. Only 600, 700 yen. So we're gonna get some pork. Chun Chan loves her meat. She loves her cucumber, loves her meat. We got some ground beef over here as well. Another one of our regulars here is some gyoza. So this is really good, really cheap, only 100 yen, yasuine. And just fry these up, ready to go, really tasty. These are actually vegetable gyoza. Another one of my favorite snacks here in Japan and your best bang for your buck, the healthiest option here is natto, which is fermented soybeans and really sticky. 
and really sticky texture. And this is actually divided amongst Japanese people. Half of Japanese people really love it and half of Japanese people really hate it. We love it and it's super cheap. It's full of protein, it's super healthy. And one of our favorite flavors is the plum flavor here and also the shiso flavor. We like to rotate every week or so between which one we get. Only 90 yen, so about 30 yen a pack. And actually, it's way cheaper if you get the one without flavor, 70 yen, and you just flavor it with whatever you want, like soy sauce, and you can save a lot of money. Best, cheapest, healthiest protein source in all of Japan. I actually really hated natto the first time I tried it, but I really wanted myself to start liking it so that I could save more money and eat healthier. So I forced myself to eat it like every day for a week, and after the end of the week, I started liking it. So that's my recommended strategy uh, for you to start to learn to like natto. One of the last sections here and one of the last aisles is just a whole variety of different snacks in these plastic containers and I can't even begin to explain them all but we got some basic things like fried chicken, some meatballs, some chili shrimp and onion rings and all different deliciousness here. And if you come here late in the day, so that's the secret, you gotta come here right before closing time and this stuff will all be on sale like 20-30% off and if you come here late enough and you're lucky enough you can get 50% off these are really good. This is the sweet potatoes with like a caramelized kind of thing around it. And ja, kore mo tabioka. Mam, ah, mam, mam. So these, of course, if you make it yourself, it's even tastier because it's fresh. But this is going to be our dessert for tonight. Really good. We can't forget about the tofu aisle. So these are 10% off. Nice find. And there's a bunch of different tofu options here, as you can see. One of the perks of living in Japan, tofu country. A bunch of different varieties of tofu. And yeah, this is just a whole aisle of tofu. And we've got some udon noodles here, which are actually 8 yen a pack. Only 8 yen for this whole pack. And if you buy more than 7, then it becomes 18 yen per pack. So we're going to get some udon noodles. So we're also gonna make some udon at home. One of my favorite dishes. I actually think I like udon more than I like ramen. We've also got some soba noodles here. Same deal, eight yen for one. And then after seven, it becomes 18 yen. So this place is really cheap. One of the reasons I love this place. And last, we gotta get our beverages. Saigo wa nomimono. Yay! Yay! These individually small packed drinks are really popular here in Japan, but it is a big drainer of your money. So. I avoid those like the plague. And we usually just get simple things like we used to drink a lot of orange juice, but we're trying to cut that out now. And usually we try and go with the slightly healthier option, vegetable juice from Kagome. So it's a bit pricier, twice the price actually, but it's a bit healthier than just the fake sugary orange juice. This is pretty sugary though. And we also go with some milk. There's some good like soy milk options here. Sometimes we go with soy milk, but this is our regular go-to milk. This is the Hokkaido no. Megumi, so the blessed Hokkaido milk. So our milk is one liter at 177 yen. Bunch of different milk options here though. Ironically, I never see any cows in Japan. I guess they all live in Hokkaido, far away from where we live. Over here we've got our pudding section. Pudding's another thing in Japan that's really popular. So a bunch of different styles of pudding. And oh, this is the Hokkaido pumpkin pudding with the Halloween decorations. They don't really celebrate Halloween here in Japan, but Sometimes they really like the Halloween decorations and things like the supermarkets. One of the last things we got to show you guys, and I can't believe I didn't show you guys this yet, is the ice cream section. So my favorite section. We've got a couple different options here now. We got some Ben and Jerry's here. And this is the more, this is the most expensive section I think here. We've also got some Hagen Dots. Hagen Dots is really well done in Japan. Seasonal flavors. This is the creamy vanilla pudding. So seasonal flavors, regional flavors, these kinds of like limited edition things in Japan are just super popular. And we've got some different options here. Lady Bourdain and some Parm. Oh, these are new. Some petite donut ice cream. And I used to get this big container here, but I've actually learned there's three different varieties or three main varieties of ice cream. There's Rakuto ice, which is like the cheapest. This looks really good, but it's actually like mostly fake ingredients. So you notice on the very bottom of the package, it'll say what type of ice cream it is. This is Rakuto ice. So it is like the worst of the worst. And this is ice Miruku. So this is a bit healthier. It's kind of like in between, it's in the middle. And if we look at like Pino, for example, this is another popular Japanese ice cream. This one actually says ice cream, 
down at the bottom. So that is the healthiest, highest quality ice cream. And yeah, there's a bunch of different deliciousness here. I make it a point to usually try some different ice creams every time I see something new. And this is actually my very favorite ice cream in all of Japan, Biscuito Sando. So this is ice cream, original ice cream with vanilla bean in the center. Delicious, 90 yen here. But if you buy this at any other supermarket or convenience store, it's like 150 yen, so way cheaper. Another one I really like in this season, the fall season, is the sweet potato ice cream. Really good stuff. And I stock up on all my ice cream here because it is the cheapest. Actually, I got into this really dangerous habit that I would just stock up on all this ice cream, like I'd buy five or 10 pieces at a time. And I'd think to myself like, all right, I'll get one for every day of the week and that way I'll save money. Because if I go to like a local convenience store, I pay 150 yen for the ice cream, then I'm spending almost twice as much. But it actually was a horrible idea because I ended up eating like two or three, sometimes even four of these ice creams at a time. So the quantity that I was eating ended up being way more and I ended up spending way more money. So I'm actually trying to be more restrictive of myself right now and not allow myself to buy as much ice cream, even though I could save more money doing so here. So we're unfortunately not buying any ice cream today. We must resist. Oh, this is interesting. They've also got some soy ice cream here. So I got to try that one day. 100 yen for this tiny little container, but it looks really good. Anyway, it's time for us to check out. There's still not much uh, self-checkout options here in Japan. This place especially has some regular cashiers. Oh, it looks like Tunchan's already checked out. So they actually scan everything there. And then we got our payment machine here. Oh, we got our card. Ah, Oh, arigato. So 200 yen for our registration card. And now we can get 3% off on all of our purchases. And now it's gonna come up on the screen. So today we have 6,312 yen. This is my uh, wallet, my cycling wallet. So we got 7,000 yen, put it in here. Oh. So this is our haul for today. We usually get about two baskets worth and we also bring our own bags. That's one of the good things about grocery store shopping in Japan is most people tend to bring their own bags. They call it my bag. And I actually got this in the US a long time ago. Nice big bag and I reuse it for everything. I've also got my nice Timbuktu bag here as well. So we're gonna load these up. And of course you wanna put your heavier items in the bottom. Sometimes it's a bit of a tight fit getting everything in here. <laughs> Luckily, we got one extra bag. And put this away once we're done. And take the cart back here. That's another thing that I found interesting here is people here usually don't want to take your cart if you offer it to them. So in my hometown back in the US, that's usually what we do. We consider it a kind gesture, but here in Japan, they don't want your dirty cart right after you use it. And oh wow, well, it's already dark out here. It was nice and sunny when we went in and now it's all dark. So we can put this heavy bag right up front. So that's one of the great things about this bike. And now it's time for us to ride home. All right, it's time for our quick ride home. I actually don't have my light on my bike right now, which is a crime in Japan. I didn't think it would be dark by the time we left, but that's one of the bad things about fall season here in Japan is it gets dark really quick. So we're gonna head home now, get ready for dinner. As always, thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys found this video entertaining. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos about cycling life in Japan, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on Tuo Cruise. Janne!